Hey everyone, in today's video we're checking out the Eglinton Crosstown and how final work at station exteriors and road restoration is going and if the project will be able to open next year. Before we get into the construction of the project, Toronto is in need of new funding options for many of its services and there were worries that the city would not be able to fund and operate Line 5 if it were completed. With the new deal between Toronto and Ontario, the provincial government will be funding the operation and maintenance of the line for three years. Kennedy Station's main entrance has been mostly complete for almost a year now, but a couple smaller details have been changed. Near the top of the building is the Metrolinx T, which is meant to be a universal indicator of transit. Below the T, a Go Transit and TTC logo have also been added. More benches have been installed outside of the station entrance, and an abundance of them in the plaza. The Red Line 5 pillar has also been installed in front of the station entrance. At the Go Transit entrance on the east side of the train tracks, a new modern version of Presto machines has been installed and features a better interface with more displays. The signage at the station will also need to be remade, as Line 3, which is shown on the signs, has closed. In the TTC's 2022 service plan, the 34 Eglinton East bus route was meant to be adjusted and operate from Don Mills to Weston Road, but as of the 2024 service plan, it will continue to operate alongside Line 5 from Weston Road to Kennedy Station. It's possible that the TTC is trying to have a backup in place in case there are service issues after the line opens. The surface section of the line has also been completed for a long time, but Presto machines have continued to be installed on the platforms. Although unfortunately, unlike the machines at Kennedy Station, they are the older version of machines. Sloan Station, which has had some issues with uneven concrete, has now had a full platform rebuild. Construction of the main entrance of Science Center Station was one of the first of the project to wrap up, but some further construction works have been completed at the bus terminal on the northeast corner of the intersection. Fare gates can be seen just past the doors of the bus terminal as the platform will be inside of the fare paid zone. The route signs above platforms can also clearly be seen now and show the layout of where different bus routes will be boarding and unloading. Aside from the red pillars, very little surface level changes have been made at Laird Station. Oddly, outside of Leaside Station, an unexpected design change took place over the summer and during the early parts of fall. The corner staircase of the main entrance was redesigned and most of it was filled in with plants. While no official reasoning for the change has been released, two possible reasons could be that the corner staircase would have been a hazard, or that the space was needed for support pillars of a new condo being built above the station. Aside from the changes at the front, landscaping at the back of the station is being wrapped up and includes what is most likely a loading bay for deliveries, as Leaside is one of the few stations to have retail in the entrance building. Some new signage has been installed at Mount Pleasant, but both entrances are largely complete. The final steps of construction at the Crosstown's most complex station are coming to a close. The intersection of Young and Eglinton was just reopened after years of partial closures and a short period where all but one lane was closed. Road and sidewalk work will need to be completed and the entrance building, which looks largely complete and was open to the media, will likely be completed soon. The new streetscape along Eglinton leading up to Avenue has been completed and both entrance buildings are largely complete. The ground level interiors at Chaplin's three entrances have been completed. Fair gates have been installed at the third entrance. The staircase down to the lower concourse can also be seen. Outside of the main entrance is a small indoor bike storage building and a new parquet, which while complete likely won't open until the entire project is finished. The secondary entrance is also complete and a staircase connecting the popular Beltline Trail to Eglinton is installed, but similar to the staircase at Sunnybrook Park, likely can't open until the project has been completed. 
Forest Hill Station has also been completed at ground level with no signs of construction at either entrance. Major strides have been made at Cedar Vale Station to complete the entrances and reopen the roadway. The north sidewalk and bike lane on Eglinton have been reopened and the secondary entrance has also been mostly completed. The sidewalk and plaza outside of the station's bus terminal has also been reopened. At the main entrance, most work is complete and the indoor bike storage room is also largely complete. A nice touch is a ramp from the road to sidewalk to make riding a bike to and from the storage room much easier. Between Oakwood and Mount Dennis stations, almost all street level construction has been completed, but some minor additions have been made. At Oakwood, the red pillars have been installed outside of both entrances and the same has been done at Fairbank. A new doorway with signage has been built on the side of Caledonia's entrance building. This will connect to the Barry Go Line station in the future. The Go station was originally meant to open alongside Line 5 at opening, but both projects continue to be delayed. Bus signage, including a DWA, has been installed at the bus terminal. Hopefully, route information and maps are also installed to make the wayfinding experience better. Red pillars have also been installed at Keelsdale, and the bus terminal has been completed. The main entrance to Mount Dennis Station is largely complete with signage installed. The bike racks inside the indoor parking room are mostly installed as well. Platform construction has also been mostly completed for the GO Transit and Union Pearson Express routes. Bus only lanes are being painted on Eglinton just west of Black Creek Drive to reduce travel times of buses using Photography Drive to enter the bus terminal. Under the TTC's 2024 service plan, a new express bus connecting Pearson Airport and Mount Dennis Station via Dixon Road will also be introduced, competing directly with the Union Pearson Express. Fare integration between the TTC and Union Pearson Express would be a much better option, but the new bus route will be helpful for some people. After over a decade of construction, Line 5 is nearing completion with most stations complete at street level. Without access to the tunnels and platforms, it's hard to say what work needs to be completed, but most stations should be largely finished. Some construction still needs to be done at a few stations, as well as a significant amount of testing and inspections to ensure everything has been built properly. Thanks for watching.